Let's go into the word today. But I've been praying for our, especially our, our church. And then one of the word that God clearly told is that sold out. Clear word he said is sold out. Okay, I just have to sit and ask, Lord, what does that mean? We've been, we've been gathering, we've been worshipping him, we've been actually following Jesus in many ways. But then one thing that God actually literally wants to tell our church today is that, are you a sold out a disciple for me? There are three categories of people within us. One is that you're a normal people, okay? You're just a Christian who comes and goes. You don't even bother about any spiritual growth. Okay, you, that is one category. The another category is that you've been spiritual, but then suddenly there is something that hits in your life and you started dipping down. You are actually on the, on, the, on the downhill. You are sliding away. That's the second category of people. The third category of people is that you are someone called to be a leader or somebody already leader to. You are called to be a leader. You're a kind of, that kind of a person. These are the three categories of people that God is clearly telling that are you really a sold out disciple? The points that I'm going to share is not the exhaustive list for a sold out disciple, but these are the five things that God clearly tells for us, for this church today. Are we really sold out? Because if we are a sold out disciples, we can rock the earth. How many of you believe that? Amen. Amen. If 12 disciples can rock the then world and they can take the gospel to every parts of the world, we are more than 12 and we would have or we must have reached at least Chennai to die. How many of you believe that? We still have people who do not know God. We still have the next door. It's not even open to gospel. But God is telling, hey, you have to be a sold out disciple. If you want to really fulfill the great commission that I have given you, then you must be a sold out disciple. When I say disciple, every disciple must be sold out. There is no percentage. I'm 10% disciple. I'm 20%. I'm just 50%. No, 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 no. Your, your growth and knowing God and his mission can, you can be progressive. But then when you say I'm a disciple, you must be sold out. Let's take a verse from the verse from the scripture. It's a simple verse. Luke chapter 5, verses 11. If anyone has a Bible, would you just quickly take it from and read it aloud? Luke chapter 5, verses 11. So when they have brought their boats to the land, so when they, have their to the land they forsook all. They forsook all. all and followed him. Simple verse. Okay, they brought the boats to the land. They forsook all and they followed him. In the other words, it says, they pulled the boats to the shore. They left everything and they followed him. Do you know how many of us, we have a lot of boats tied to us. Some of us are tangled in the nets also that we are not able to leave our boats and follow. If you see here, if you read the uh, couple of words above and couple of words down, Jesus actually, this is not the first time that Peter and his disciples are meeting Jesus. No. John the Baptist who actually was leading his disciples towards Jesus. And Jesus was around them and they were, they were actually seeing uh, day in, day out Jesus. Jesus crossing them. Jesus going in the streets, talking to them. They are actually meeting with Jesus. They know Jesus already. But then they were not closely knitted with. They have seen him up from far. John the Baptist have pointed, that's the man that you guys have to follow. There was a periodic uh, association. Uh, now it is turning to become a close-knit fellowship because they follow their master. The boards that actually represents the, their living or the livelihood, their occupation, that actually provides their mundane thing. And now Jesus is telling, you follow me. What he said, I will make you fishers of men. This guy who was fishing, to, he, his fishing is just to make his living, to eat, to make his life satisfied, to fulfill the mundane things of his life. But Jesus is telling, you come follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Now you just have to imagine what would be the things that going in the Peter's mind. 
Okay, that's the only thing that he was holding on to. That's his occupation. That's the thing that is providing for his family. That's that occupation is the one that is giving money to 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 run his family. And then Jesus is telling, "Now follow me." He is just leaving aside everything and he is just following. I don't know how many of you watched this chosen movie. I don't know whether exactly it is true, but then the thing is, uh, it has portrayed that Peter was already having debts, and then he was not able to uh, pay off his debt and uh, all such things. Think about that: a man who is having a lot of debt, who is already burdensome in his life, and he is holding on to that this little job is the one thing that I'm hoping one day it will satisfy all my needs and I will be happy. But Jesus is calling you to now. drop it and come and follow me it's not easy to really process that and follow on the other hand we are cool okay fine now you follow jesus every debt is cancel i don't have to pay off my debt okay some of us process the credit card like that one day we will die and who is bothered anything everything will be cancelled now if you observe few things here one thing that we must do is that turn away from a normal christian life to a fully committed sold out disciple what is your boat that you are holding on today what is the net that you are tangled on you are not able to actually take step that you would become a fully committed sold out disciple rather than we are sticking on to the nominal sunday christian that we are not able to take decision some of us are here today that you have to take a critical decision in your life and god wants you to take it today you are not able to follow christ because there are certain things that you are thinking oh if i follow christ what will happen to me in the future but god is clearly telling hey you follow me you follow me and you have to have a closer walk with god when you say i'm a sold out disciple then you must have a closer walk with god if you see the the disciples after jesus called them before that they were here and there doing their own things but then you after the calling after jesus called the disciples they left everything that they were doing in their own wisdom and strength but then what did they do they just simply followed him they went wherever they uh, jesus went they did whatever jesus did in fact they were serving jesus for the three and a half years they did not even know what they must do but then they just followed jesus at the end of jesus was ministry only jesus actually inducting all the disciples now you guys go and i will give you the authority some of the disciples they left their wives at home they followed they went not knowing when they will come back today we have a phone call every 5 minutes you will get a call from your home they did not have all that but still they followed why because they just want to follow christ in everything God says you must be a sold out if you want to fulfill the great commission and if you want to change the world if you want to rock the world then you must be a sold out disciple without the sold out disciples this process will not speed and and we will not be able to accomplish leaving the boat leaving the nets actually changed the course of life it changed the whole course of life are we ready to change our course of life we are so comfortable with our boats we are so comfortable in getting entangled into what we are but jesus is asking are you ready to change the course of your life when jesus say follow me he ask you to do our two things jesus asked us to follow his life his mission but sadly what we do you know naturally we follow his ministry we are not called to follow his ministry okay i'll explain you how it is Okay, Jesus called to follow his life a life of obedience to the father a life of being humble life of actually living the mission that god actually entrusted to him and sent him into this world that's what jesus is asking follow me which means uh, follow his life and then follow his mission why because he has actually entrusted into his mission which means that when i follow jesus i must follow the mission that he has given me sadly we follow into the ministry 
Jesus did a lot of ministry. Jesus literally raised the dead people three days after, opened the tomb, bring him out. You won't be able to do that. He healed many people. He casted out many demons. He did a lot of things. Thousands of thousands of people. He just, by his word, he healed. We won't be able to do that. Not that I'm demeaning. No, God has given authority. But then that's not the ministry that we have called. You have called to a unique ministry. In fact, Jesus himself is saying, the other hand, you will do more than what I have done in this world. When I say that you are not called to the ministry that he has done, is that simply that don't follow him to perform great miracles, signs and wonders, rather than follow him. Rather than follow him. When you follow him and his mission, the ministry will follow. You're understanding? Yes? Because sometimes we get, oh, many of the time, even naturally for the ministers of God also, when we say we follow Jesus, the next immediate thing is we want to do healing. We want to do miracles. We want to do a lot of signs and wonders just as how Jesus did. Great. If Jesus was given that it's a portion of your ministry, great and fine. But if that is not, then don't even worry. All that we have to do is follow his life, follow his mission. And everything else that comes is an add-on. That's why the rich ruler in chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, when he came, what I must do, what was Jesus' reply? He gave sudden commands. He said, okay, I'm already following this. He said, okay, go sell all your possession and then follow. Did you follow him? No. Why? He, he doesn't want to leave the boat. Peter was willing to leave the boat. Andrew was willing to leave the boat. James was leaving, or willing to leave the boat. But this great rich ruler doesn't want to leave his boat. If you want to follow, then you must leave your boat. Some of us jobs are our boats. I'm not calling you to full-time ministry, okay? There are enough pastoral staffs, okay? But if that's what God is calling you, you must do that. You must do that. If God is calling you to go to some other nation, go. That's what you must do. But are, but we, are we really following Christ when He calls us? Following is hard because we don't get to choose where we go. We have to trust and submit to the one we are following. That's the challenge today. We want to follow you, but then we would have our own ways of following you. No, that's not following. If you are following Jesus, you don't even ask him, Lord, why are you sending me? Where are you sending me? No, God will say where you have to go, you must follow. That's the following that Jesus wants us to do. In our life, Certain times you don't even get an answer for your prayers. God said, be quiet. Then we must be quiet. Wait, we must wait. You don't, uh, you don't cross verify or you don't keep on asking, Lord, you gave that to this person and you are not giving it to me. Why I am, am I less than that person? No. And God said, because that's the, that is the kind or that's the state of a follower. If you are following Jesus, then you don't have any other option except the one you are following. Jesus did that. Jesus actually lived it out in his life. On the cross, he said, Lord, if it is your will, would you please take it? I'm so suffering. But he said, okay, no, no, not my will, but then let your will be done. Ten years before, we had the same scenario in our lives too. Me and my wife were working and not, I, was not, I was not earning that much. So it is easy for me to okay, leave my job and come into full-time ministry. But then my wife was earning good money. In the ten years before, 70,000 was her last drawn salary, which was a huge amount. Today's at least it will be equal to a two lakhs. And then when, when, when God called us, would you just come? Follow me to into this mission especially. And she was the one first gladly said, no, no, no. If you are going, I am also coming along with you. Because I believe that it is a family ministry. It's not individual ministry. Happily, she just dropped off. There was no regret till today. But there will be paths that will be adventurous. But you still, in all your excitement, you just follow God. In all excitement, you just keep following God. 
There are many people God is telling that you must follow. You have to take a decision. You cannot be delaying your decision today. You have to change the course of your life. You'll have to really follow him. Not as a nominal Christian, but a fully committed, sold out disciple. The second thing is, if you are a sold out disciple, then you must do this. What is this? Love Jesus more than anyone. Love Jesus more than anyone. Luke chapter 14, verses 26. If any of you have the Bible, read it louder before it comes on the screen. Luke 14, verses 26. Is it already in the screen? Okay. Okay, read it louder. Okay, this is very... Everyone have to hear it, okay? Okay. Anyone comes to me and does not what? Okay, some of your teenagers, you love this verse. No? Okay. okay, let's go on. Does not hate father and mother, wife and children, wife and children brothers, and sisters, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, yes, their own life such, a person, such a person cannot be my disciple. Cannot be my disciple. How, how hard this verse must have been for the people who firsthand heard that verse. He's saying, if you are my disciple, if you are loving me, then if you are not hating your father, mother, wife, children, siblings, and everything, even your own self, then you are not my disciple. What does Jesus really want to convey to the people? He's telling, if you are, you have to hate everybody in this world, only then you can love me. The simple point from this verse is that uh, even to the point of your immediate family, the mother who gave you birth, the father who protected and provided, the siblings who were already always with you in the part of your growth and everything, the wife who is going to be with you all through the days of your life, everybody whose immediate family, the, the, the most that you love, you must actually love me beyond them, more than them. Simply as that, uh, when we come and compare this word, the love for God must be such that all the other love, by comparison, is hatred. God is not telling, hate your father. No, he won't contradict his own word because he says, uh, honor your father and mother. So he will never say, hate your father. The thing is, the simple comparison is here is that uh, the way that you love me, naturally, all the other love that you have for people or things or anything will be compared as hatred. That's the highest level of love that we must actually, the way that we must love God. The most we love drives our life. How many of you agree that? The most we love drives our life. What is the most that you are loving? If you are loving Jesus and Jesus is driving your life, you will leave your boat, you will leave your net and you will follow him. If wife is the most that you are loving, okay, in, in not in any wrong sense, okay, Today's, we'll have, today we have to be very careful because there are a lot of creative content creators who chip chop, cut copy and put it in somewhere. Right, so already I have set the context and uh, what is the most that you are loving because that's going to drive your life. If children is what you are most loving in your life, they will drive your life. How many of you are infant mothers, okay, mothers who have toddlers, you can agree that. Your children will drag you from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., to make, eat that food. They will drag you. In our days, my mother will say, if you want to eat, this is the lunch time, eat and go. After two o'clock, no food. Naturally, we will come and we will eat and go. Today, our children, 11 o'clock, from the time that you start cooking, till evening comes, they will eat and you will be running behind. The more we love or the most we love drives our life. If you love money more, most, then it will drive your life. If you love your job the most, it will drive. If you love your emotions most, that's going to drive you. You love somebody in this world and they're going to drive you. Later on, you will regret for that. I love this, I love this uh, 
pastor's wife one of one of the one of the senior uh, pastor's wife uh, she went into a con- she went to for a conference in the north india and she was actually teaching the women uh, there and then the women in that conference are asking this pastor's wife how do you really handle because your husband being a, a, a known person known pastor itinerary traveler who is going up and down ministering how are you handling how it is possible for you to trust and love your husband because he is most of the time he is not at home the one thing she she was with all the smile she was saying i don't trust my husband first rather i trust god because of the overflowing love and trust from god comes on me i'm able to love my husband and trust my husband more i don't put my expectations on my husband a lot rather than i put my expectations on god abounding love from god comes and actually comforts me and meets my expectation whatever that i have i have this funny example from the the scripture where uh, how many of you know abraham sara right how does sara calls uh, her husband lord right how many of you wife calls your call your husband lord you don't okay we don't okay i asked my wife okay would you call me because see sara is calling her husband the lord would you call me she said lord okay then i only have to write the uh, contact list i only have to write my name as my lord so see this this sarah who calls him lord which means in one sense this lord should protect this woman agree yes because he is lord of the person which means this lord actually takes care of this person now a king comes and takes her away and this lord is actually not protecting rather than this lord is actually fearful and he is kind of sliding down he has been taken now she is in king's palace what would have been her thought hey i called you lord but you are not protecting me i loved you the most but you now sent into a king's palace i trusted you but you have sent me here no i don't think sarah had that thought rather than because she it says that the scripture says because sarah trusted the lord god made a way for her escape god brought her back sometimes our love for people comes first god says no 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 you love me first and then with the abounding love that i give you you start loving people that's why in the new testament all of the love scripture the source of love is god which is agape love when we have that love that abounding love comes upon us we will naturally be able to give to others God says would you love me more than anything sometimes we actually have to compare every situation if my most loved ones or god which one i will go which one i will go or we also have to rethink is it my pattern that always i put down god and i keep my loved ones always first there are times that yes you may have to give a, a importance to your loved ones not necessarily uh, that you are putting down intentionally no there are life situations that you will have to take a call but then is this the pattern that you are always putting down god first and then keeping the loved ones always higher god says love me love me first if you are a sold out disciple you would love me why because if you don't love me you will never be able to sustain the mission that i am giving okay peter did that then he realized it judas did that he couldn't realize it sometimes we have this confusion what is that we admire god so much admiration is not equal to love wow god did this so much god healed me god provide me and we give thanks to him but that is not equivalent to loving god we can admire many people around jesus admired him but not many people loved him so are we admiring or are we loving we need to love god more than anything then we will become a sold out disciple there are many places in my life that i have to be in that way where i'll have to compare my situation versus god okay i had my grandma whom actually i was literally grown up in her house when she passed away i was already here just the end of the lockdown there were ministries fully packed that i am not even able to go there 
when my uncle passed away i'm not even able to go there there are many relatives uh, weddings i'm not even able to go there fully packed here there will be a lot of emotions going but you still because you love god more and you want to follow him there are certain things that you just okay fine that's fine i will do god's thing some of you are thinking pastor this is not the way but i'll tell you some secret at the end john 6:66 uh, talks about that okay so let's move on the third thing is if you are a sold out disciple you must take up the cross okay let's read matthew chapter 16 verses 24 Matthew chapter 16 verses 24 Matt Then Jesus said to his disciples Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me simple as that you must deny yourself take up your cross and follow me if you are to be a sold out disciple then you must do this you have to deny take up the cross and follow him what is this is you have to cease to make self as one uh, object of one's life and actions you are always the center of your life you are always the center of everything that's happening sometimes we assume too much that even if people don't think like think uh, people don't think about you you still believe that they are thinking about you and they are working around, against you everything is centered around you cross bearing includes willingness to die for christ cross bearing is actually a total commitment even unto death self denial complete dedication and willing obedience are part of taking up the cross it is not that easy we need to turn from self centered life to christ centered life life in christ sometimes invokes persecution that is very it is very inevitable life in christ invokes persecution we have to change carrying up the cross which means basically that sometimes we assume lot of things and we build a wall around our own lives the first thing is that if you have to take up the cross then you must break your own walls and come out of it you must carry your cross which means that you stand for christ in any place at any time you have to go into your workplace you have to go to your family you have to go before your friends you talk about christ and you stand for christ people will laugh at you people will mock at you and people will actually distance you they will actually let go of you they will not take you in but still are you standing for christ that is taking up christ, taking up the cross are you still able to stand for christ they will persecute you are you willing to take it up sometimes we have the fear of losing friendships many people i have met hey go tell your friend because he is doing wrong and now that i can't do and now the spiritual life is different and friendship is different if i go tell that spiritual things my friend will leave me sir are you standing for your friend or are you standing for christ are you willing to take up the cross no you're willing to take up the cross of your friend denying my own selfish ambitions desires lust and greed going back to where god has placed me and i still stand for christ that is taking up the cross are we willing to die because taking up the cross is not simply saying that we have the olden days we have something called the the, the cross on the pocket and then there will be a little prayer that will be written and then uh, we keep that cross on the pocket wherever we go especially when it comes to exams we take it into exam call because we believe that pocket on the cross will help us to get good marks no 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 cross bearing cross is not something th- like that why because bearing the cross is jesus taking the cross going where to die and if you have to take up the cross you need to be aware that one day you will die for christ we like the jesus on the cross but we don't like the cross of jesus yes we like him when he is hanging on the hanging on the cross we like him because he actually saved us from the sins but we don't want to take up the same impact and burden for christ 
We like him on the cross, but when we don't like the cross of that Jesus. John 15, 20, 21, it says, they will treat you this way because Christians do not belong to the world. Persecution from the world is inevitable. If you are living a good, sold out disciple, people will persecute you. If you are not being persecuted, then something is wrong. If you are not being actually provoked, then something is wrong. If you are not being claimed for or charged against something for your belief, then something is wrong. Why? Because we are not exercising as a sold out disciple. Noah was mocked for standing for God. Abraham was moved to an uncharted territory for standing for God. Joseph went to prison. David was chased and he was traumatized. Daniel was put into den. John the Baptist beheaded. Apostles all, all were killed brutally. They stood for Christ. That is taking up cross. Today, what are we talking about taking up the cross? A little scold from your mommy, daddy? That's what you think that taking up the cross? No. There were several times that, that in my life that I have experienced this. Not I'm boasting, but I'm sharing my experiences so that it will encourage you. You need to stand wherever you are. Pastor, if I stand like this, I will lose my job. No, 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 no. You have to stand for your belief wherever you are because there is no difference between secular and sacred. There is no difference between job and your personal life. No, no, no. Everything is only one life. In, all the, in, one, in one life, you do everything. In that case, even in your office space, you must stand for your belief and your values. Just because they give you monthly salary, you cannot sell your core belief that you have on Christ. There were times that, uh, that, that I've been intentionally, personally, actually cornered for the stand that I have, got, I have for Christ in my offices. My own managers, my own, my own team leaders will corner me because I would say, Sunday is a day that I want to serve for God. No matter what. No matter what. If you ask me to sit and slog the rest of the week, I will be happy to do that. But this is the day that I want to serve my God and I'm not going to compromise. Several days I've been cornered. To be exact, more than a year I've been cornered. There were days that I went to my home with tears. There were days that I've been fully dejected. But still God said, okay, stand. Stand. It is painful. But still God said, stand. The day will come that God will deliver you from all of that. It's not that easy. So you must actually learn to stand for God all times. Simple as that. Being around Jesus doesn't mean you are with Jesus. When Jesus was living on the earth, hundreds of people were around him. Around him were his family members. Around him were people. Around him were friends. Around him, apostles. Around him, many people. Wherever he go, n number of people were around him. But who were with him? Who were with him? Only the few disciples. When you are with him, you will experience what he is experiencing. If he's been persecuted, then you also have that sting on you. That's why Peter was hiding. Why? Because he know if you belong to Jesus, then you will also be caught on that day. You must take up, your, take up your cross. If you have to be a sold out disciple, take up the cross. The fourth thing, a sold out disciple must learn. A sold out disciple must learn. Mark 4.34. Can we quickly read that? Mark 4.34. He, he did not say anything to them without using a parable. Using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained, he explained everything. Simple as that, if you, if you look from this scripture, people in general were not ready to take the full truth of the gospel. So Jesus had to explain to them using parables and uh, illustrations and all of that. But then when you see, when he was alone with his disciples, Jesus taught more specifically. But even they usually needed to have things explained. 
There are certain things God will have to explain to you specifically. You must be in the spirit of learning always. If you are a disciple, then you must learn. There are certain things that we don't understand. We need someone to taught or we need someone to teach us. We need to be in the process of learning always. If you are a disciple, then which means the, the word disciple actually means you are a learner which means a lifelong learner. I think uh, I have used the same points in one of my sermon where he, the word disciple means learner. The learner gives two perspectives. One is that uh, you are actually a, a, a follower, which means an follower and adherent, which means that you must follow over, you must be a follower of a person and uh, adherent of his teaching. Then you are also a pupil, which means uh, that you must learn the teaching you must also be an apprentice, which means whatever the teaching that you have learned, you must also practice that in your life. Without doing this, I cannot be a disciple. If I'm not, if I'm not learning, if I'm not in the process of learning, then I can never be a disciple of Christ. The word of God says in John 8, 31, to the Jews he believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. If you hold to my disciples, which means in order for you to hold the teachings of Christ, you must learn it day in, day out and exercise it day in, day out. We must be in the process of learning. Finally, disciples make disciples. Disciples make disciples. If you are a disciple, then you must make disciples. It is not an option. It is not an option because that's how we're going to reach the world. That's why Matthew chapter 28, 19, 20 says, Go, therefore, go make disciples of all nations. Go make disciples of nations. To whom God gave this command? To all of us, firsthand, his disciples. So to the disciples, he is telling, Go make disciples. Which means if I am a disciple, I cannot simply come Sunday, causally go and out. I have to make disciples. If I have to make disciples, God has a program. Simple, three-step program. What is this? First, you must go out. You cannot simply confine it to your own boundaries rather than you will have to step out. Which means I must at least have a, a tendency to speak with the people to talk about God. Yesterday we had a uh, we had a, uh, a baptism and after that we went to uh, opposite coffee shop and then uh, there somebody while we were just having the coffee uh, one uncle came who you guys are which company so now naturally what you will do what bothers you we are having coffee go no then that uncle comes and then asking which company then I have to explain him, we are a bunch of people from the church. And then you make that point as an encounter with him to share the gospel. Then you talk to him nicely and then ask about his whereabouts and all that and then start inviting him. And I told him, uncle, that I'm tomorrow preaching. Why don't you come to, uh, 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 why don't you come to church? I, thought, I know I want to come, but then I'm not able to come. Why? Because I have office. His name is uh, Rama Sundaram, which deliberately means... Yeah, you got my point. Right, so you make the opportunity to bring him to God. I tell him, okay, Lord, uh, I, tell, I told him that, okay, uncle, give me your number. Let us have some uh, talk and let's speak and let's have some sort of a connection. You have to first go out. Okay, break your boundaries. Start speaking with people. Okay, and then start really talking to them, not just because there is a command given to you. That's why I said, if you love Jesus the most, this love is going to help you to do all these things. If you don't have this love, we will never be able to do this at all. And then when people, when people believe, take them to the process of baptize, which means publicly they should also announce their faith. And then don't leave them like an orphan because they are now new baby take them to the process of teaching them so that they will be fed properly, grow in the faith. A disciple's job is not just coming to church or a church building. A disciple's job is not that you alone pray, you alone read the word, you alone grow. Just this first finger or index finger alone cannot get fat. 
it will be awkward. Every part of the body must grow, which means I must take the feed to all the parts of the body. That's where we will grow naturally equally. It is our job. It is our job. Last verse, John 6, 66. Why did I say? Because I, I've made like a couple of verses very hard and strong saying this and that. Okay, let's read that. John 6, 6, 66. From that time, From that time many of his disciples, of his disciples went, back went back and walked with him no more. And walked with him no more. Sometimes, follow Jesus, I said, okay, you have to leave this. You have to leave that. You have to stand for Christ before everything. Looks hard for us. Pastor, for preaching it is easy, but then to live life, it's hard. That's the kind of a sermon there is to follow. I said, okay, leave everything. You must start hating your all these people and then start loving. Hard teaching. Jesus did the same thing. At the end of it, John says, as he was doing like this, as he was preaching like this, it says, many of his disciples left him and they did not follow him anymore. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. Why? Because the word of God clearly says, if you want to go to the eternity, if you want to make it to heaven, if you want to be part of God's kingdom, the path is how? It's very narrow. Not everybody cannot come. Not that we don't want those people to come, but then those who actually disciplines themselves, those who put their faith, those who follow Christ strictly, only those people can follow, come into this narrow path and reach that destination. So it will be hard. It will be hard. And the people who are fragile, vulnerable, they may not choose this path at all. But then Jesus never bothered about, I will tell the truth, as truth. I will preach because that's the fact. I will preach because that's the truth. The same thing, I want to do it today. If you think that this sermon is hard, perfectly fine. But this is what the word of God tells. Many actually left Jesus. Many left Jesus after he preached like these. But only a few stayed with him. Only a few stayed with him. And those few actually reached the entire world. If you want to be part of that few that can reach the world, change the world and bring the world to God, you're blessed. And I want to give a call today because I know definitely I've been, I've been preparing this, uh, I've been hearing this word from the month of March, end, April. But then God really does not want me to preach till this day. I really asked, Lord, you gave me this word two months before, but you're only asking me to preach it today. God said, I'm preparing certain hearts to respond as you speak. And today I want you to really stand up as we pray, as we pray, if you are turning your life towards God. And if you want to really follow Christ all your life, some of you are called to do a full-time ministry also. When I say full-time, I just want to be limiting these words to the context. There is nothing full-time, uh, half-time, part-time because all of us are called to do the ministry. Only thing is our workplace is different. But then some of you, your workplace must be different into the mission field. God is calling you. You have to follow Him. Some of you, you have to take up certain decisions. Why? Because the the, the, the delay that you do is not helping you to move forward in your life. Some of you have to literally leave the sin that you are constantly entangling, but you are complaining about your well-being. You are not being good in your life or not getting settled, all of that you are complaining. But then God is telling, leave that sin that you are holding on. If only 12 people raise or stand at this crowd, at this house, we can still, I believe in Christ, we can still reach Chennai. We can still reach Chennai. But then in this house, we have more than 12. More than 12. That's why God has given us a nations to go. If you are if you are led by the Spirit to recommit your life, if you are led by the Spirit to follow Christ, would you just stand to your feet? I just want to, I just want to pray for you. Because some of you are, you are sold out. 
God is telling, "Hey, you do anything for me. You must be prepared, okay? You can do anything for Christ." not bothering about your family not bothering about your job not bothering about the money not bothering about even your relationships certain relationships but you want to do everything you want to go to any extent you want to run even without shoes you want to run even in the desert land you want to slog all night to do certain things for god If you are such a person God is asking you to stand. Spirit of God, I pray that Lord today the decision that they have taken oh Father that you would honor oh Father. And I pray that Lord of oh Father it is not going to end here just by standing. But Lord of oh Father this is the beginning of new things in their life. And I pray that Lord of oh Father they would run they would run oh father and i pray that you would help them oh father to grow just as how when you called the 12 disciples oh father i pray that lord of oh father that these will be the 12 oh father that you are calling today so that lord of they will do anything and everything that you want them to oh father <coughs> that these people oh father will follow just as how the 12 followed all through the days of their life leaving everything being with you always doing what you want them to do spirit of god i pray that you would oh father help them you would speak into their lives of oh father you would change the course of their life of oh father and i believe of oh father that these people will transform the areas that you're going to send them into <clears throat> father i pray that you would be with them equip them lead them in your matchless name we pray amen, amen.